Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tip. My name is Julian, and as you can see, I'm not in my home studio today. That's because I am abroad. I am currently actually in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. I'm actually heading over to Dubai today, so I'm on a little bit of a uh, vacation, a little bit of a trip, uh, mostly for my mental health. I'm actually gonna be out for a little while, going to different places around the world, and uh, yeah, it's mostly for my mental health uh, for the last couple of months. Uh, it's been a little bit rough for me. I, if you guys don't know, other than doing Fantasy Tip, it takes so much time every single week because I do multiple episodes, so much prep, I do all the slide work, everything like that. I also have a 40 hour a week job, a nine to five job, five days a week. So yeah, I was getting a little bit burnt out, so I definitely, definitely took the trip. But I absolutely love doing what I do here with Fantasy Tip and with you guys and I'm not gonna stop making videos, although I am gonna reduce my output a little bit. As you can see, for the next few weeks, the waiver wire and drops video are gonna be combined. So at the end of this video, I'm gonna have some drop options. And uh, Max will be taking over the weekend videos for the next few weeks while I'm away, just so I can you know, relax a little bit more and just take it easy for my mental health. Funny thing for all you Canadians watching, they have Tim Hortons here in Abu Dhabi and Dubai. They have so many Tim Hortons. It's actually hilarious. I didn't really think that Tim Hortons existed outside of Canada other than a couple of locations in the States, but there's actually a whole bunch of them. Not as not as many as in Canada, but there are a lot of Tim Hortons here, which is really, really funny. Cheers. So guys, yes, this is the Weaver Wire video for week 14 of the fantasy hockey season. Before we get into it though, guys, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And without further ado, guys, let's jump right into the schedule for this coming week. And as you can see here on the screen, guys, there are four games on Monday, 10 on Tuesday, another four on Wednesday, 12 on Thursday, three on Friday, 14 on Saturday, and three on Sunday. So it's a pretty standard week, guys, where uh, the off nights are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. And there are really not a lot of games on those days. So if you can max out the amount of players that you have playing on those days, you have a really, really good shot of winning the week, guys. All right, so as usual, guys, there are teams that have a good schedule and teams that have less good schedules this week. The team that has the best schedule this week is the Edmonton Oilers. The Oilers play three of the off nights, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday this week, so they are the best team that you want to grab players from in order to maximize your players playing on off nights. Other teams with really good schedules are Anaheim, San Jose, Montreal, Nashville, and Winnipeg, which each play two games on off nights. Now, teams with bad schedules are teams that only play two games this week. Those teams are Anaheim, Boston, Chicago, Philadelphia, Vegas, and Washington. So as you can see, Anaheim appears on both lists. They only play two games, but both those two games are on off nights. So they're not the worst team to be owning players from this week, as long as you're streaming them for the off nights. Jumping into forward options for this week now, and first on the list is Michael Bunting of the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I've had him on this list quite a few times now at this point because uh, he's been absolutely incredible ever since he started heating up on that line with Matthews and Nylander. He has been hot and he, I think is going to stay hot the rest of the year. Definitely someone that should be more than his current ownership percentage of below 70%. Then I have Max Pacioretty of the Carolina Hurricanes, and he's finally returned from his injury. He was actually only supposed to return in mid-February. So the fact that we're at the beginning of January and he's already back from injury, those of you who drafted got a huge steal probably where you got him in his ADP. Those of you that have not added him yet, He's still available in like 40% of leagues, which is absolutely crazy. He is a game changer. He is a top three round pick normally, and this year is no different. He's a very, very big talent, and on Carolina, he should do very well. Definitely, if you haven't added him yet, he is a must add. He could be a league winner for you. And then I have Brandon Hagel of the Tampa Bay Lightning, and T Brandon Hagel is still playing on a line with Kucherov and with Braden Point. And as long as he sticks there, guys, uh, he's very valuable and he's also playing top power play with Tampa Bay and he's been doing very very well over a whole bunch of weeks even if he goes cold guys I'd hang on to him because he's someone who's getting some great deployment in Tampa Bay on a very good team next I have Tom Wilson of the Washington Capitals and it was reported that before the year flipped to 2023 that he was going to be back very very soon could be back within the next couple games guys and if he is he can get top line roll and should get a good amount of power play time and he's always got a nice floor with shots and with hits wilson is someone that should be owned in more than 52 percent of leagues he's a really really good stash right now obviously patch is the better stash but if he's not available and wilson is go ahead and stash wilson 
Then I have Victor Arvidsson of the Los Angeles Kings, and he's quite hot right now playing on that second line with Philip Dano and Alexia Fallo. It's a good line. He's doing well. He's finally shooting again, and I love, love seeing him finally producing. He should be added in more than 29% of leagues. Then I have Tyler Pertuzzi, 27% roster, and he's another stash right now because he's going to be back soon as well. He's had a rough season so far, getting injured twice, so he hasn't played a lot of games, but I actually believe in him, and I think he's a very, very good player. He's going to get top six deployment, should get a decent amount of power play time. I think he's going to be a very, very good fantasy contributor. Same thing with Andre Palat. He's finally back from his injury, and he's playing on that top line with Nico Heischer. It's a very, very good deployment, and Jesper Bratt. So, yeah, he didn't really produce that much earlier in the season, but there's a good chance that he can turn things around now and start producing, so he's definitely a speculative ad at this point. Then I have Alex Killorn, who's playing on the second line with Steven Stamkos and Anthony Sorelli. It's a good deployment, and he's been scoring goals lately, so I definitely like him right now. Then I have Connor Sherry of the Washington Capitals, and though the Capitals only play two games this week, Sherry has been insanely hot and is definitely someone that you should consider adding because he's playing on the top line with Alexander Ovechkin. Now, Wilson coming back could potentially affect his deployment. Wilson could take his spot on the top line, but with him performing so well, I just don't see that happening. Stream him as long as he's hot. And then I have Nick Schmaltz of the Arizona Coyotes, and Schmaltz is someone who's getting top line and top power play deployment in Arizona with the best players on their team, with Keller, with Chikrin. It's a good place to be, guys. And he's a very talented player, and you saw last year towards the end of the year how hot he was in that chemistry that he had with Clayton Keller, and he's already showed that off this year so far. I like him. If he's available, go and grab him. Then I have Cali Yarncroak, and this may be the last time I include him on this list, but he had such a hot streak playing with Tavares and with Marner that I had to just include him here in case he heats up once again. He's got two games now without a point, but he definitely could heat up again playing on that line. Let's see how he does. Then I have Cole Perfetti of the Winnipeg Jets coming back from his injury, and he's a very good player, and he's going to get some solid deployment in the top six in Winnipeg, and with the injuries that they have there currently, could even slot into the top power play, although Ehlers also coming back from his injury, so maybe he won't get top power play time. Either way, he's going to get top six time, and he's going to have solid deployment, guys. Winnipeg's also got a couple off nights next week, so overall, he's a solid streamer. Then I have Thomas Tatar of the New Jersey Devils, and he's getting second line deployment, or that you can even call it the first line, with Jack Hughes and with Eric Hall, and Hughes, he, um, we all know, has been incredible this year. And Tatar has been given deployment with Heischer and has been quite hot lately. So as long as he can stay hot and he can produce with Jack Hughes, he's definitely a viable fantasy option right now. And then we have Mike Amadio of the Vegas Golden Knights. And even though Eichel is back, Amadio has kept his spot on the top line with Mark Stone. He's on a multi-game point streak, and he's been performing incredibly well. As long as he keeps performing, he should stay on that top line, and is definitely fantasy viable. I like Amadio a lot right now. Then I have Rasmussen of the Detroit Red Wings, and he's playing on the top line with Larkin still, and he has still been producing, doing pretty well, getting top power play deployment as well. In deeper leagues, he's definitely a solid add right now. Then I have Kent Johnson of the Columbus Blue Jackets playing on the top line with Liney and Gaudreau. Obviously, I don't have to tell you that's great deployment. He definitely could produce in a deployment like that. We're going to have to see how he actually ends up doing, but for now, definitely liking that spot for him. And then I have Alex Barabano of the San Jose Sharks, and I have him here because of the off nights. He gets a couple of off nights this week, and he's been sneaky good all year long, guys. I've said that many times this year already, but he's been putting up a lot of points and is playing top line, top power play. The deployment is there. The production is there. Just an easy streamer for this week. Then I have Nick Bukestad of the Arizona Coyotes playing on the second line with Kraus, and he has been producing lately. I believe he's on a four-game point streak, scoring about five points or so. And as long as he keeps that hot pace up, he's a pretty decent streamer, also wins a decent amount of faceoffs. Then I have Clem Cotton of the Edmonton Oilers, and I was actually going to suggest him on this video even before he was moved to the top line with Connor McDavid, just because he gives such a safe floor with hits. And even though he's already giving a safe floor with hits, now he's moved up that line with McDavid and he's already scoring some goals. So imagine now the production that he can possibly get playing on that top line with Connor McDavid. It's an excellent streaming option for this week because you get three off nights Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Definitely like the upside, especially if you're in a hitting league. And then finally, I have Colton Sissons, who's on a four game, five point streak. He's doing very, very well right now. And as long as he's hot, guys, I like streaming him. He could gain right wing eligibility because he's actually playing on the top line with Philip Forsberg uh, on that right wing and Parson is the center. So even Parson is a viable streaming option too, if that's someone that you want to look at. But he's also got the off nights this week. So if you're in a super deep league and Colton Sissons is available, 
he's a pretty decent streaming option. Jumping into defenseman now, and first we have Jared Spurgeon. He's performing very well right now, putting up some nice peripherals, putting up points pretty frequently. I would say it's only a matter of time before they put him back on that top power play because Addison has been very, very inconsistent and usually not very good. I know he had a three-point game just the other night, but uh, it just, there's, not, there's no consistency with Addison, and I think Spurgeon would do better on that top unit. But Addison's been there the whole year, so I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. But Spurgeon is still putting up some pretty decent stats to merit being owned in a lot more than his current ownership percentage. And then I have Eric Gustafson of the Washington Capitals. And with John Carlson gone, guys, he is the top power play man in Washington. And as long as he is, he's going to be producing, guys. He's looking really, really good, putting up a lot of points right now. And if you need power play points, if you need points in general, he's a really, really good defenseman to be owning. And I have Adam Larson, 55% owned, and he actually went on a seven-game point streak. Who saw that coming, guys? He's not really known as an offensive D-man at all, and he doesn't get any power play time. He's very, very good for peripherals, for blocks, for hits, for shots. But... Uh, points is not usually his bag so it was cool to see although he's not on that streak anymore so he may not be getting points for a little while now but guys uh, he's still someone who's pretty good for the peripherals and I would consider picking him up if he's still available in your league because the points upside while I don't expect that to continue forever he still could put up some points now because he's still very very hot right now then for deeper leagues we have two options here first being Adam Boquist of the Columbus Blue Jackets getting the top power play deployment has two assists in his last three games so he could be heating up uh, so I definitely would suggest adding him guys if you need a defenseman that has points upside and then I have Cam York who has seven points in his last eight games all assists but he's doing very well right now getting power play two deployment and as long as he stays hot guys you can consider adding him although I wouldn't expect that to last too too long. Jumping into goalies now, and first one list is Kirill Vimelka, who has had three bad games in a row, so he's on a little bit of a cold streak, but overall in the year, uh, he's been quite impressive, and I think he's definitely worth rostering if you're in a points-based league. And then I have Phoenix Copley of the Los Angeles Kings, somehow only 40% rostered. He is the starter now, guys, in LA, and he's performing very, very well. He's ownable in points leagues, in categories leagues, He's doing well in any kind of league format that you're in. He's someone that you should definitely consider picking up if you're in need of a goalie. Uh, he's probably not going to be on the waiver wire much longer. Then I have Gustafson in the Minnesota Wild, and he's still getting about half the starts in Minnesota. And when he is called upon to start, he's been doing pretty well. So I definitely don't mind that streaming option if you need someone that's going to get a decent amount of starts for a pretty decent team. Then I have Jake Allen of the Montreal Canadiens, and he had a rough night the other night when the coach left him in the crease to be scored on nine times by the Washington Capitals. I don't know why he was left in the crease, why he wasn't pulled, whatever the reason was, but he did bounce back uh, the other night against the New York Rangers, allowed three goals on 30 shots, which is a 900 save percentage, which isn't too bad. He's definitely more of an option for points-based leagues than categories leagues, because, you know, Montreal is not that great of a team, but he's definitely a good option for those points leagues. Then I have James Reimer of the San Jose Sharks, and he's getting the majority of the starts for San Jose, and overall in the season, he's been pretty good, and if you need a goalie, he's definitely a pretty decent option. Then I have Uko Pekalukkanen and Eric Comrie of the Buffalo Sabres, and Lukanen right now is the starter in Buffalo, with Anderson getting one out of every three or four games or so. And when Anderson is called upon, he does well, but he doesn't start enough games to really merit being owned outside the deepest of leagues. He's definitely a good streaming option when he does start, and then Eric Comrie is someone who's coming back from injury pretty soon. So when he does come back, I think that means that Uko Pekalukkanen gets sent back down to the AHL, unfortunately, even though he has performed pretty well. So if you do have UPL, definitely stash Comrie on your IR because he's probably going to be taking over the crease once he comes back from injury, and that should be very soon. I know in this episode there seems to be a lot of guys coming back from injury, and that's because there is. Then I have Spencer Martin of the Vancouver Canucks, and when we flip the calendar to 2023, he started off the new year pretty well with a couple of decent starts. Now, his most recent start wasn't so good, but I think Spencer Martin is going to figure it out, and I think that he's going to have a few good starts in a row until Dampo comes back from injury. I think he's a pretty decent streaming option in points based leagues. I wouldn't touch him in categories leagues. Next is Casey the Smith, and he's got a very good opportunity ahead of him right now. With Jari injured, he's going to be the starter in Pittsburgh until Jari is healthy enough to play so we don't really know the extent of this injury right now but it could be a couple of games it could be a couple of weeks could even be longer than that potentially the smith is going to be getting the starts for a pretty good team in the Pittsburgh penguins and definitely could help you out for your fantasy team if you're a jari owner you definitely should be picking him up and if you're just in need of a goalie in general he's definitely a viable option for you right now 
And then at 8% roster, we have Jonas Corposalo of the Columbus Blue Jackets, and he seems to be getting the majority of the starts right now for Columbus. If you're in need for a starter, he's an okay one. And then finally, I have Alex Dalloc of the Chicago Blackhawks, only 6% rostered, but he is getting the majority of the starts for Chicago, and he actually hasn't been too bad this year. So if you do need a starter, if you're in a point space league, I don't think he's a bad option for you. And that's it guys, thank you so much for watching all the way through. If you enjoyed the content today, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks so much guys, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tips.